Is everybody in? Is everybody in? The show is about to begin. Cheering crowd sound It's concerts Concerts that made us Concerts that made us Dot com <sighs> Hi, this is Jono Sweetman And you're listening to Concerts that made us Jono, you're very welcome to Concerts That Made Us. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Brian. It's cool. It's great to have you now. I'm looking forward to diving into your music over the next bit. So on February 22nd, you released your debut EP, Other Side. It's your first as a singer-songwriter. Take us a bit deeper into the album. Um, it, it's, 
you know, it, most people that know me from the South African music scene uh, know me as a drummer. I'm a session drummer, and um, I, I've always kind of played guitar. I've actually been playing guitar the same length of time as drums, but never really delved into it, never really got it together. And, you know, I pursued drumming pretty pretty intensely through my 20s and into my 30s and um, got involved in the jazz scene. And obviously the music is pretty demanding playing jazz. Um, so I just got immersed by it. And I, I don't think I touched a guitar for like 15 years from the time I started. And um, so, and working as a drummer, obviously, um, you know, I, I would, if I had time off, I wouldn't be delving back into into other instruments and playing. I guess I've got so many other things I love to do as well. So, you know, music did become work for me a lot of the time. And uh, and then during lockdown and COVID and these, you know, everyone knows about that. Um, I kind of felt if, the, the, if if there was ever a time, it just let me let me re- revisit the guitar and start start looking at what's what I can do because I could do a few little things, but I didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> right. And then that was the journey, and that's where it started. Um, and and also for me, songwriting was I'd written some pretty lame songs like back in the day when I was younger, and um, nothing really went. I didn't n- n- nothing really came of them, and um, so I didn't really trust my songwriting ability. I, I trusted my arrangement ability, you know, arranging music. Often in bands as a session drummer, you'll actually do quite a bit of arranging yourself, you know, coming up with parts. And so the the one, the missing puzzle for me was lyrics. Like I've never written lyrics. So, um, you know, starting that, that process was quite daunting. And, um, and I'd written one or two things and listening back to them because I'd always, if I had an idea, I would record it and then listen back. And um, and I heard some of the lyrics that were coming out, and I was like, "This is pretty cool. Like I, I could listen to this, you know. That's for yeah. us." And uh, my wife was is it, well, she was a DJ for most of her life. That we actually met through the music scene, so I really trust her her opinion um, of things. And I kind of bounced it off her, and she said, "This is pretty cool. Like you can actually write songs, you know." Um, and so it's it's just a I flexed that musical muscle that I'd never actually before and and then you know after the first two songs i said okay cool i'm gonna do an album and i had 10 songs and i was ready to go and then i realized oh shit you know 10 songs the lights like pre i don't have anyone to to bounce this off of it's just me and my laptop and um to cut a long story short you know i i got a friend of mine who who was in a very similar place he was keen to start something that he'd always wanted to do, and I had the time and the means, and we jumped into this. We dwindled it down to five tracks, and then that's that's this EP called Other Side. Right, right, I see, I see. You kind of took an interesting process when you were writing as well. You kind of, didn't you sit there with the guitar and just kind of let the lyrics come to you? Yeah, so uh, th- there's, an, uh, there's a few you know, people that I've had um, that have been um, integral parts of my musical journey. Um, and one person who was a big part of it early on was was Jim Jones. From from a, he, he's he calls himself Small Town Jones. He lives in in North Devon in the UK, and I spent quite a bit of time there. And um, in my early twenties, and I got a lot out of that time. You know, spending with him, uh, the music, a lot of the music he was writing and, and playing at that time was very much like this album of mine. It's kind of singer songwriter folky stuff. Um, and um, so I've, I've been kind of bouncing ideas of him from when I started this, I started to kind of bounce ideas off of him. And I, I said to him that this is the way that I've found to, to, to get lyrics happening. And he was like, I do the, I do a similar thing himself. He, he kind of just, um, I sing gobbledygook, so I just, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to f- see the the rhythm of the vocal, uh, the lyrics. I want to, s- the phrasing of it for me is almost more important than the actual lyrical content up front for me. Um, and then 
whatever words kind of drop into my mind, I kind of think, wait, 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 what am I saying here? What, what is coming out here? I mean, it might, might be complete gobbledygook, you know, like just random words, you know? And then, and sometimes a word might sound like a word and then I'll say, oh, that's the word, but why would I say a word? So it's this kind of back and forth kind of, I guess it's quite an esoteric kind of meditational process where you kind of, thinking about what could this mean from a backward angle and from this angle, what could it mean? What could this, and then obviously one side realized, Oh, this is what it, this was what the song could actually be about. I get, I get it. It's almost like it's the third person kind of, and, and then, and then bang, the lyrics came. And then I would just, some songs came quickly and some I left for a few days and then I'd come back to it and sit to the guitar and then it, it, a few more lyrics would drop. And then, yeah, it just it just kind of went like that, you know. So it, I guess the 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 guitar strumming harmonic idea with the first few changes was the framework, and then I I kind of the lyrics and the phrasing of the of the of the the lyrics was kind of put on top of that. And then the drums for me was always it's going to be very simple, like just tone, more about tone and, you know, where the drum beat, like a lot of these songs are, are guitar up front and then drums kind of join in just to lift the song, but it's not a super rhythmic um, endeavor, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And when it came to the album, you had a couple of different people involved. What was it like trying to pick the right people? Um, budget <laughs> no <laughs> these they are, these these are very close friends of mine and people that i know get the side of my musicality i guess some of the my good friend mark buchanan he was the guy that pretty much makes this album it's his first i think it's his first actual commercial release i mean he's had commercial releases before under his name as a guitar player and as a musician but i don't think this is i think this is his first as a mixing engineer so, I mean, we were sitting for hours, like mixing, like one vocal take, or you know, like bouncing of mixes, then losing like tons of guitar parts, and then scouring through hard drives to find lost material. I mean, I guess a lot of musicians that have produced before can relate to that. So we were we were in the deep end together, and uh, Mark Buchanan is an incredible musician. I mean, he's. Uh, I don't know anyone with with ears like that. He's he can hear. He's not he's not a highly trained he's not a trained musician. Like he didn't go to school and stuff, but he's he can hear chords and he can hear stuff. That's I mean he's just yeah he's he, he's he's kind of a big part of what made this thing possible because I had this guy who I really trusted, a little bit older than me. He's been through so many different musical experiences. He was he was in a a very cool um hip hop band in the, in the in the late nineties, early two thousands, Max Normal, um, uh, and together with um his friends uh, Shauna Tim, who's also our trust, he was also involved in this in some way. He helped us with one of the tracks. Um, these two guys were kind of early on got me the framework, got the framework going. And then some of the other musicians are just good, just good friends of mine that are just, you know, phone a friend kind of uh, guys. You know, um, the the first one is Guy Buttery. I don't know if you know him. He's a he's a great guitar player from South Africa. I've heard the name already. Yeah, yeah, he's just a killer guitar player. And we we've worked together before, and obviously as me as a drummer. And then I I said to him, Hey, Guy, like, what's what's the story? Could you would you be interested to just maybe play on one of these tracks? And um, I send. He lives quite remote. He lives out in the Midlands, in in KwaZulu Natal, which is quite far far away from me. So we we did this remotely. I sent him some tracks, and he, within a couple of days, um, he sent me something, and I just I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It was like what, <laughs> you know, <it> was incredible <laughs> yeah. takes. Um, there was a bit of bleed. He had to like bleed through his his headphones onto the track, and he was like, "Oh, should I redo it?" I said, "No, dude, this is like incredible." So that was that first song comeback was him with Ebo and acoustic guitar. Um, and, and that was just like a breeze for me, you know? Um, and then the other musician was Carl Shepard, who is a musical brother. We've played jazz together for many years. We've toured a lot um, around the world playing jazz. I'm, I'm kind of part of his trio outfit. He's a pianist. And also it was just, 
you know, dying to to get him involved in some way, but I just didn't know how it worked because he's pretty, he's quite a heavy jazz player, you know. So, I, so there's a song uh, on on the EP, the last track called "Tell Me." I feature him, and um, I, 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 I battle to knuckle him down because he's he's a busy busy catch, you know, and um, and he. Yeah, it's taken. It most probably took about a few months of hit and miss trying to get get through to him, and then I managed to to get hold of him, and I went to his place, and he just I'll never forget it because it's actually a digital piano. It's not a real piano. It's a, it's a sampled piano. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it's it's not a, it's not marked up piano. So I was in his place, and he just he did a take and 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 of on the song listening to it a few times but he didn't really i know he was very busy at that time but he wasn't really he didn't overthink it and and he played something it was very kind of quite safe and beautiful kind of romantic modern classical kind of take and then i looked i, I remember looking because i know what he's capable of and i know what what his ears the way he hears music and i said to him car like just 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 do something that you think could be like you know, within the range, like I said, don't go too out there, but just just push a little bit, and and oh okay, and then he just I really forget because he's got this like set up at home because he does a lot of movie scoring, so he's got this um, digital uh, this this MIDI keyboard under his like under his desk, and he just yanked it out like, and he just smashed this beautiful like, I mean it was incredible piano solo right at the end of that track where he just kind of. That's something a little bit angular. It kind of just the way for me, the symbolism behind that is to end this song off with this kind of quite sophisticated harmonically, this the sophisticated like jazz solo, which kind of tips the hat to that world that I'm I'm actually mostly a part of, you know? Mm, yeah. And but yeah. then the bulk of the work is this kind of beautiful lyrical, kind of a very simplistic kind of stuff, you know. So yeah, those are the two featured artists. And then obviously there's so many other people that's um, my wife did the photography for the cover art, which I think is really beautiful. That is me freezing my balls off in the, in the, <laughs> in the ocean down here in, in Malpo Strand. And um, um, yeah, Maurice Palega, you, you might know him from, from Dirty Skirts. Ah. I've asked him, you've interviewed, because I, I, I played drums on their new EP, Radiant Clouds. Ah. I was the drummer on that EP, yeah. So, so Maurice is the bass player for that band, and I, I really, I just dig him as a human. And that song, "Other Side," is kind of a rocking piece. And I know he's got such killer basses, and he's got that indie skip. You know, that's what he calls it. It's like that kind of, it's it's straight eights, but it's got this like a little bit of an upbeat twang to it. And I just wanted him to kind of lay down the bass in that one. And um, gr- glad to have him there. And then obviously Mark Buchanan's a killer guitar player. He played on some of them and. So yeah, there's backing vocals from a, a friend of my wife's who I've also known for years. She teaches music, and I sent her some stuff. She sent me one take back, and it's like nailed, beautiful, done. And so it's it's been the, the actual tracking was hard. A lot of the parts myself doing stuff, but with the stuff that I sent away to people to to contribute was just seamless. It was there was never really any any hassles there, you know. Yeah, 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 and you know, it kind of I know it's folksy singer songwritery, but it kind of transcends boundaries or genres as well. Were you surprised it didn't sound more jazzy, or was it a con- a conscious decision? Yeah, um, I definitely, you know, the the jazz thing for me is is a is a touchy kind of thing. It's like, you know, I play with so many musicians of of the highest level, you know, and um, when it comes to that. I can I can play that stuff on drums, but I can't really play it on guitar unless I really kind of have to. Like, it wouldn't be natural. I'd have to really like try and kind of figure it out. Um, and the whole idea for this album was like a cathartic kind of just let go. Uh, a lot of these songs are down tuned guitar, easy. I'm I'm literally holding two fingers on the on the fretboard, and just yeah, wailing away, you know. So it's it's like it's it's very simple and and just natural songs like the melodies i would come up with sometimes just playing guitar because we i don't know if you know in south africa now we we we're enduring a beautiful thing called load shedding where yeah. we get power cuts and so um during the beginning of that um when it became more intensive like it is now um there would be evenings where we would be sitting in 
in, in you know darkness and um and in the whole neighborhood's blackout you know these mass blackouts and i just have the guitar and just be playing and playing and playing and then you know these melodies would just naturally come so it, it's i think if i'd done something more jazzy i would have most probably had to kind of go to pen to paper or kind of figure things out and i'm definitely you know i'm i'm highly influenced by bands like radiohead and um I could name a few others. I, I love Ben Hard's new stuff as well. Kind of where, where rhythmically it's quite interesting. There's a lot of odd time measures, and uh, you know I'm into math rock as well, like in some small way, you know. And um, love the the, the whole post rock thing as well. There's so many beautiful. So I'm I'm into that kind of thing, and I, I definitely think further down the line I'm going to get into like putting the drums down and getting something rhythmically really interesting, and then trying to find the space for the guitar. And I, I mean, I think a great tune is, could be just a melody and a, and a, and a beat, you know, I think we, we kind of, we don't, we, I think I don't have to go into the harmonic thing as much in the future, maybe. So I'm going to see how that, where that goes, you know? Right. Right. I was actually thinking of asking, have you thought about any live shows to support the EP? Have, have you even, you know, is that a concept yet? So, so I've I've been I was offered a, a live uh, slot recently, and I I turned it down. I shat myself. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm kind of not ready for it just yet. Um, I I guess you know as a working drummer, it's kind of all I do. I, I'm a musician. That that that's pretty much how I bring the bread in, in in you know. So, um, as a drummer, I'm I'm really busy. You know, so I feel like to get to the guitar, I'm going to have to kind of get there and really get flexible and obviously I, I know what where I want the level to be you know for the performance so I've kind of put that on the on the sideline for now but I definitely want to do something um soon and even if it's like a support act play two or three songs and just put it out there so and I've got so many cool connections to people that I've played with over the years that are doing concerts and I could kind of muscle my way in um, that that's kind of the idea is to is to jump on a support act at some point this year, definitely. Yeah, right, right. Interesting one for you now. If you're not, you know, doing loads and loads of gigs, how are you getting the music out there? Yeah, so it's it's literally just things, platforms like this. You know, your your podcast, great ways to just talk about the music, um, and and just letting it fly online. You know, I've I've obviously got so many close friends and 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 family that are loving it and sharing and doing the thing um but on a mass like on a on a bigger scope level um i'm just kind of this this was a thing that i didn't want to overthink too much because i think people can get super pressurized about a release and um oh, what are the numbers you know i mean i know so many musicians that i work with that are sitting with their spotify stats and like <laughs> scrolling <laughs> Stressed out and 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 I've I've tried to not get too into that space. Um, the the, the initial um, I guess the heart behind this was I just want to let this go. I want to I want to do this, and once it's done, I want to let it like let it fall wherever it may, you know. And um, and then obviously you 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 have to start registering. You have to start doing all the the publishing. You have to, and then you the whole world opens up and you realize, wow, this is this is actually a lot of work. It's a lot of, a lot of things you need to do. And so I guess for me, it's, 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 I'm going to take it as a natural process. I'm not going to get too stressed out. Um, and keep, keep, I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying my, um, my drumming at the moment. I've just toured, did a, a, a short tour in, in Switzerland and in Germany with a cool band. And there were a lot of, cool things that came out of that and and also in my playing developing you know trying to develop as a drummer as well so this by no means is this album just a by the by it's a it's an it's a very it's a big thing for me it's huge you know but um i'm going to find pockets of of time within my schedule and within what's happening in my life and i'm going to focus on on getting it out there maybe performing um but it's like i said it's it's going to be a natural kind of 
I'm going to try and make it as 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 stressless as possible. <laughs> yeah. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> and you know the podcast is called Concerts That Made Us, so I have to ask you some concerts related questions. First of all, as a concert goer, what concerts have made you? Um, there's there's a few that have uh, that have that have really like um moved me like intensely. I I am. Um, uh, I'm a, obviously growing up as a or starting out my musical career as a jazz drummer, or you know being a drummer and then getting into jazz. Um, an inf- um, album that really influenced me was was M- Miles Davis's um, Kind of Blue album. I'm sure you know that that iconic yeah. album. And the drummer Jimmy Cobb, um, he actually came to Cape Town with with a, a great pianist named Jerry Jerry Allen, and I can't remember what year that was. It was at our international jazz festival here in Cape Town. And um, that wasn't that long ago, but I'm sure it was like 2014-ish or 15 or somewhere around there. And um, I mean, there have been many others before that as a youngster, but this 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 show just just killed me, man. I I mean, seeing this old timer. I mean, he's he's passed now, but you know, seeing him just at that age, like um, just playing this. This be- you know the, the the ride symbol. I'm sure you know the ride symbol mm-hmm. in jazz is a big part of the beat. You know, it's it's yeah. the it's the high it's the high end sort of the the ride symbol. And and on that album, the, the ride symbol is such a massive part of that sound. It's the sizzling kind of sound. And I was always so when I first heard that, I'm like, I thought, what is that? Is is someone watering the garden? Or you know, I just didn't know what it was. <laughs> You're always trying to pick out things you're hearing and you're trying to transcribe. You know, and when I heard that. I thought, I don't know what that sound is, you know, and then it was this journey towards this beautiful ride sound that Jimmy Cobb had, you know, and then when I saw it live, it just brought me to tears, you know. I was just like, I was crying. I left. I had a beautiful like st- a steady shot camera. I left it there. I left my so I was <laughs> ran off stage. It was a complete mess. It's like you know. It's, anyway, it's but it was such an incredible experience to to see him and just to experience that. Um, the real time seeing someone so far down the line still giving so much to to the live performance and um and not holding back you know um because oftentimes i mean musicians just go into autopilot you know and just play and and this guy wasn't doing that and it was so so beautiful and i just it hit me so hard you know yeah um yeah. that was also just a, a, a sign for me as as a musician i was i was i would have been in my 30s then like mid 30s some but it was supposed to be about 10 years ago and it was just it was like a a a, a, a flag post you know just going boom okay next next i'm i'm ready for it you know uh, i think just to see someone like that um, doing it at that age and still giving us like music's for me. This is it. This is I'm on the right road. I'm just going to keep going. You know, I guess it's these these moments. You know, of realization. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Would you like to be still doing it yourself at that age? Maybe in your eighties or? Sure. Oh, for sure. No, this is it for me. Yeah, for damn sure. Yeah, I love it. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, and. I know it might be a tricky one now, but when you think of all the gigs you've played over your career, is there one that sticks out above the rest as the highlight? Um, I mean, I'm just, there's so many really cool ones, um, but I'm going to say now, uh, because it just dropped in my mind, as you said, that was we played in a, in, in, a, in a jazz trip with Carl Shepard. We played in a, um, a, a Buddhist temple. Oh, just man. outside Tokyo, yeah. <laughs> and it was quite interesting. We we were in we were in Japan and um, we were touring. We were there for quite a while, and we'd seen some beautiful places and we'd been played in some amazing concert halls and things like that. And and then we got to this. We we actually got to Tokyo right at the end. And it, obviously we hit the city. It was crazy. And they were they were, we played in a a Buddhist temple there as well. But it didn't it wasn't it, it it wasn't at all like a Buddhist temple. It was kind of like a like a, it was an interesting place. It was very modern and didn't have that same feeling. But then we ended up at this very old Buddhist temple, and these, um, the the temple had opened up for for these concerts like uh, midweek. It was like this thing that they were doing. It was almost like um, like in some church in Protestant churches, you have these like youth evenings where like youth can come and just 
it's, it's not so serious and people wear jeans and stuff kind of like that but for 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 a buddhist temple so it was really interesting we 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 we, we set up we i mean it was the most beautiful setting it was incredible but the the, the opening act was like these buddhist monks with gongs walking <laughs> around incense like ding ding i mean it was incredible like just walking around and 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 it was a crowd i mean i would have said there was probably about 100 people there but just on the on the floor just just sitting down and then we played this south african jazz music <laughs> it's like incredible <laughs> it's like, and and it was you know the japanese cr- crowds are incredibly um quiet you don't hear clapping during songs and things but once we were done, there was this beautiful warm applause and we saw people that were weeping and they were just so oh moved God. by the And I, I was just like, well, you know, where am I? Like, you know, pinch myself. It was just incredible. It was just a really cool, cool gig. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely one of the most unusual places I've heard for a concert as well. <laughs> yeah, it's very unusual. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you flip it around then, is there a gig that was maybe everything went wrong and how did you overcome it? <laughs> um i've had a few of those being being a drummer um i think i think the one the one that comes to mind which is which is super classic i mean there's a few and, and when musicians sit around and, and have a few drinks we often talk about these these experiences but um i had one where the entire wedding venue collapsed on the band oh my gosh <laughs> it was a tent so it was, it was okay but it was chaos and um getting instruments out there was a squall it was it was crazy and we had a good laugh about it afterwards um but but that that was one gig but the other was um one of my first performances as a as a drummer as a session drummer in johannesburg i actually was there for a short time i was considering basing myself there um and I got offered this gig with with an orchestra and a big band. It was, it was quite a big gig, um, and I can't remember if they, uh, the conductor. It was his first gig as a conductor, and it was my pretty much my first gig as a as a drummer with that size of ensemble. I played a lot of jazz gigs and smaller combos, and the music was intense. It was um, it was all the bread out of breath uh, music from. Um, from old exile jazz repertoire it's like it's it's a heavy body of work you know and there was a discrepancy with charts and music in the rehearsal it was a, quite a big mess so it was like you know I, I would say there was probably about 30 people on stage and i was the drummer and i was green and, and, and as you know and i just remember getting through the first few pieces you know about the skin of my teeth reading getting lost in the charts in the music you know because you know you i had so many different charts from pianist and guitar because none of them had drum parts so and i just, i'll never forget the one moment where the there was this beautiful reprieve where i got through one of the songs like thank god one you know or two or three down okay next one and then i, I remember having this beautiful sense of relief like the, the calm in the in the middle of the storm i looked at this, this conductor and he looked at me and he was smiling and, the, and there was this pause, this t- entire auditorium, it's just this pause. And he looked at me and nodded and I looked at him and I nodded. And then I was like, what, what is he, what? And then it just dawned on me, I need to count the next song in. This oh. is like, this is it. <laughs> I remember it, it, the panic set in, so it's like fight or flight. So obviously it's like, get up off the drums and just run out the back door or just take a chance to try and just click your sticks together and hope it's because I didn't know what song it was. I'd gone blank, like completely blank. So it was just, I remember looking down at my sticks and it was like, whoa, push, and I just hit them together and I, I lifted my hand. I just crashed the cymbal and the whole orchestra just came in. Boo, and then within like two, three split seconds, the song just downloaded into my head and I just carried on playing and, and we, we made it to the end. But it was like the most. I mean, it was it was that feeling was like being completely weightless. It's like a jump to a cliff. But we made it through the gig. But that was definitely one of the scariest moments of my life. <laughs> I could imagine. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, you know, when you think of your career and all the gigs you've played, all the things you've done, how do you keep it fresh and exciting at this stage? Um, I think for me, it's gear. 
right. you know, you can make it a nice new piece again, and it can kind of add a palette to to the sound. Um, but this, to be honest, this 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 um, endeavor of me playing guitar and singing has rejuvenated my. I, I definitely have another focus now. Like you know, whenever I feel musically a little bit lost, or I'm just going from gig to gig. Um, I can definitely just grab the guitar and just keep fleshing out. I've got a bunch of songs now that are, are ready for, for, you know, uh, getting stuck into again. There's, the next EP is definitely going to be out towards the end of this year. So so that that's how I kind of keep it fresh. And then obviously, you know, I get messages from so many different people like to to play a gig. And, and that's the one thing about being a session drummer is you just, you, you become a bit, sometimes you become a, uh, a drummer, a psychologist, a driver, <laughs> dancer, all in all in one kind of <laughs> one setting. You just have to be all these people, you know. Mm. And uh, but one thing I love to do with drumming is to take on that artist and just to support them as much as I can, you know. And with that, there's always something new. It's always, I mean, someone will write music and they'll, I'll, I'll think, uh, you, someone will say, you know, can you make this? There's a couple of shows. We got a, we got two rehearsals. And a couple of shows, are you interested? I've, I've been wanting to work with you. Great. I'll say, yeah, that's great. And then I'll do some researching and I'll check the other side. Oh, that's that's cool. It looks like it's going to be like a mellow kind of chill jazz thing, maybe a little bit of bossa nova. And then I'll get there and they're doing like crazy fusion rock music, you know. It's like <laughs> you missed the mark. And, and then we're smashing out all this heavy stuff and I'm like, what's going on, you know? it's And so it's, it's never... Yeah, it's it's always I've always caught by surprise as a musician, especially in Cape Town. Right, right. So get you. And before we dive into the last couple of questions, then any future plans you'd like to tell us? Um, so definitely the next the next EP. I I I have some. There's actually some songs that I I wrote before some of these that have been on this EP, and um, super excited about some of them. Um, the one was actually almost landed a really nice um uh slot in a commercial which is which is like obviously as a, as a musician trying to put out music it's always nice if your song gets picked up and it gets used in some sort of commercial or gets used for yeah. something cool where they kind of keep the integrity of the song and they use it in in, in some cool way and obviously it's a, it's a nice payday but it's also a validation that that people are looking for stuff so they, one of those songs that almost ended up on a commercial is is in this next set. So I'm quite keen. I'm, I, the person who got hold of me saw it somewhere else on YouTube or somewhere, and so I'm quite keen to like really make sure that that one is solidly put together. Um, oh. And then otherwise, the the year is actually quite quite open. There, there's a few things happening. The middle of May, where where um this band I've just toured Europe with, uh, this jazz band called Skyjack, also um just done an album release, very cool Swiss South African collaboration band. Um, that's that's gonna that's gonna tour and and then and then there's so many other things coming. But I think for me, um, the next little bit of tracking and the next little bit of going into this process again is is coming soon. Yeah. Nice. Brilliant. Brilliant. Right. The the last couple of questions, there are a few random odd ones, but I'm intrigued to see your answers. First off, what are you currently obsessed with? Golf. Golf. <laughs> I've always I've, I've always been obsessed with golf a little bit, but um I uh it's a love hate. I, I I it was so when I picked up golf again, um, which was a few years ago, about ten years ago, after not playing much in in my twenties and thirties, um, I, I I got into it, and then I got super frustrated. Then I went for some lessons, and I got super into it again. And I'm um, I, I just the golf swing is this elusive, very intense thing that I'm getting into, and so that's that's one obsession. Right. <laughs> <Many. Right. laughs> the next one: if you had to spend twenty four hours locked in a room with any musician from history, who would it be? Uh, um wow that's intense um hmm. i guess it's such a problem because i love so many so much music um but who would it be yeah uh 
wonder. Because I want to say Jimi Hendrix, but because there's so little I know about Jimi Hendrix. But um, you know what? I'm going to just go with Scott Matthews, actually, right. because I dig him and I dig, I'd dig. i love to pick his brain on songwriting. I think he's a master. And he's 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 one guy I've been uh, over the last um sort of sort of ten years I've just his every every album that comes out looks like damn this guy the lyrics the, the the melodies so yeah he's definitely I'm gonna say Scott Matthews <laughs> good one good one and the final one what is your go to album go to album um uh. I mean, just to be honest, recently, it's, it, I'm going to say kind of blue. I'm just going to say Kamal's Davis kind of blue. Just it is, there's no feeling like that, that, that feeling you get when, when that first song starts to play. I'm going to say that one. Even Brilliant. though there's some, I love the war on drugs as well. The, the living proof that that song for me is it just, when I, when I listen to that, to me, that's a perfect song, you know, mm. yeah. so I'm going to go with kind of blue. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Must be that one. So listen, Jono, it's been an absolute blast now. Thanks a million. Thank, thanks so much, Brian. I really appreciate it.
Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please rate and review us on iTunes and Spotify. And if you're interested in signing up to Band Builder Academy, use the link in the show notes below and enter the code CONCERTS and you'll receive 10% off. So, until next time, keep rocking. Hey, hey, what are you guys still doing there? The show is over. It's over. You can go home. Go on. We'll see you next time. We'll be here.